Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome all of you to worship service to our Heavenly Father God in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Before we hear the sermon, shall we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you for the salvation from the hell from heaven, Lord, from sin to righteousness, and from curse to blessing, Lord. Thank you very much for giving us new life, Lord, through the blood of Jesus Christ. We confess our sins, whatever you reminded us today, Lord. And we believe you forgive all our sins and cleanse all our sins, Lord, and also cleanse from unrighteousness so that we may be able to worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord. Protect us from the thief that steal your words of God and let the angels minister to us today. Let this place be kingdom of God, Lord, in the presence of Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, before we hear the sermon, as usual, I read the book of Psalm, chapter 13. How long wilt thou forget me, O Lord? Forever? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall mine enemies be exalted over me? Consider and hear me, O Lord, my God. Lighten mine eyes, lest I sleep at the sleep of death. Lest mine enemies say, I have prevailed against him and those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. But I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord, because he hath dealt bountifully with me. Yeah, what a beautiful psalm. You know, even though the children of God pass through the valley of death, the final result is what? Well, even the devil following us to hurt us, our heart, our body, whatever, our life. At the end, God sent his angels to help us, Lord. Believe that, okay? Okay, uh, today's main scripture, the first Samuel chapter 16. First Samuel chapter 16. A verse 1 through 13. Yeah, I read for you, okay? You, you can hear it from me. The time when you hear the words of God, most important time. More important than hearing sermon, okay? And the Lord hath said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him? from reigning of Israel. Fill thine horn with oil and gall. I will send thee to Jesse, the, the Bethlehemite, for I have pro provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take an heifer with thee, and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord and call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will shew thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake, and came to Bethlehem, and the elders of the town trembled at his coming, and said, Comes thou peacefully? And he said peacefully, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to 
with the sacrifice. And it came to pass, when they were come, that they looked on Eliab and said, Oh, surely the Lord's anointed is he before me before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord sees not as man sees, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse made Shammah to pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this. Again, Jesse made the seven of his sons to pass before Samuel, and Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, I hear all thy children. And he said, There remained uh, yet the youngest. And behold, he kept his ship. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him. For we will not sit down till he comes hither. And he sent and brought him, brought him in. Now he was ruddy and withal a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horns of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And Saul's servants said unto him, Behold, now an evil spirit from God troubled thee. Let our Lord now command thy servants which are before thee to, to seek out a man who is the cunning, a, a cunning player on an half, and it shall come to pass when the evil spirit from God is upon thee, and he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. Yeah, the Saul is first king of Israel. When Saul, the anointed as the first king of Israel, disobeyed the word of God, the spirit of God departed from him, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. The Lord God decided to let him down from the throne of king, and he sent Samuel to the house of Jesse, so that he might anoint one of his sons as a new king of Israel. Samuel anointed David. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon David, an evil spirit came upon Saul at the same time. Yes, even these days, even the born-again Christian, even though the Holy Ghost in there, within them, they disobey the words of God, the, they lose in the presence of the Lord, presence of the Holy Spirit. That means disconnected, you know, the, uh, the you know, relationship with God momentarily until they repent, okay? In Old Testament period, okay, somebody reject God permanently, the Holy Spirit taken away. What a, what a grace, you know, we have received, okay? Yeah, the Lord God has chosen David the smallest, smallest son of Jesse, to be the second king of Israel. And God sent Samuel and asked Jesse to be sanctified as well as his sons so that they might sacrifice unto the Lord. Jesse brought forth all his sons except David. David was not interested by his father to be considered for sanctification as a king of Israel. When seven sons of Jesse were passing by Samuel, Samuel tried to find out who is the one 
to be anointed as the king of Israel. The Lord God spoke unto him and not to anoint any one of them, even though they look so good, you know. Samuel asked Jesse whether any other son he has. Upon hearing from him, Jesse remembered David finally. And Jesse said unto him, saying, Oh, there remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. That means he is in the field, okay? But the father never considered him to be king of Israel because the father you know, saw his countenance, his height. He probably he may be a little smaller than other brothers. Samuel asked Jesse to fetch David. Send him over, you know, for they will not see down till he come hither. When David was brought in, Oh, now he was ruddy. Ruddy means, you know, he always spent his, his you know, his life uh, in the field, okay? Exposed his face, you know, to the sun. That's why, oh, his face just like, you know, bronze, okay? Suntan, ruddy, right? Ruddy, all you did while ruddy. And withal a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, arise, anoint him, for this is he. Even though Jesse knew the beautiful countenance of other sons and their goodness as well, but not of anything of David. David always stayed in the field to take care of the sheep of his father and in all his heart with all his life. Then the Lord said unto Samuel and said, Arise and anoint him, for this is he. As soon as he anointed him, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. When Samuel was trying to anoint Eliab, saying, Oh, surely the Lord's anointed it before him. The Lord said unto him, saying, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. And David was anointed. Israel was in the midst of the war with the Philistine at the time. The army of Israel feared to fight with Goliath is a general of Philistine, so that no one volunteered to fight with them. Because, you know, Goliath asked, you know, army of Israel, anybody want to fight with me? Come. And nobody you know, volunteered because they fear him. He's a very tall man, very strong man. He's a real warrior. Oh, all of a sudden, David volunteered to Saul, king, to fight against Goliath. You know, young man, you know, that volunteered to fight with Goliath, okay? You know, giant, okay? But Saul refused his request and said, Oh, he's but a youth. The Goliath is a man of war from his youth. But David said unto Saul, boldly, Thy servant kept his father's ship, and there come, came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. I went out after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I cut him, about his beard, and smote him, and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. He couldn't endure, okay, seeing the Goliath, you know, it's inserting at the the God of Israel. Yeah. David emptied him, exactly as Jesus Christ, to be form of a servant and did his best to take care of the ship of his father. Now David, just like a Christ, okay? He just, you know, emptied his heart. He forget how he is how he how 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 old is he and how much you know, power he has you know 
he never for, he forgot his age too about for, yeah, emptying himself and the feeling in his heart as the burden is you know from the Lord and did his best to take care of the ship of father right yeah with all his life the Lord God had already seen David who was trying all the ship of his father with all his life the people of Israel were the ship of the Lord God God was looking for the one that shall keep his ship with all his heart and with all his life just like David Asa is one of you know one of a uh, writer of book of psalm and testified of the ship of god he said o god thy hast thou cast us off forever why does thine anger smoke against the ship of thy pasture the ship of thy pasture means people of israel and render unto our neighbors sevenfold unto into their bosom their reproach wherewith they have reproached thee, O Lord. So we, thy people, and the ship of thy pasture, will give thee thanks forever. We will shew forth a thy praise to all generation. Upon seeing the Lord God was with David after he was anointed, Saul tried to do all kinds of evil against David. The young man killed Goliath only with the one stone, and he killed in you know, Palestinians, Palestinians much more than Saul did. Woman sang to praise David, saying, "O oh, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousand. Therefore, King Saul planned to kill David with jealousy. Yet jealousy is very, very dangerous. You know that." Jealousy is resulted with killing someone. Just like Cain, jealousy with his brother Abel, finally he murdered his you know, brother Abel in the field. That's why the jealousy, hatred, is just like a murder. All right? Very careful. Don't hate anybody, okay? Whenever King Saul tried to kill, kill David, David prayed unto the Lord, and trust only in the Lord. Passing through the valley of death, he prayed unto the Lord, even in the midst of se uh, severe tribulations. He trusted in the Lord to the end, and said, as we read in our book of Psalm 13, right? It is a prayer of you know, King David, because he always, the followed by King Saul, you know, uh, unto death. How long would thou forget me, O Lord? Forever, how long would thou hide thy face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall mine enemy be exalted over me? Consider and hear me, O Lord, my God. Lighten my eyes, at lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest mine enemy say, I have prevailed against him, and thou's death trouble me rejoice when I am moved but I have trusted in thy mercy my heart shall rejoice in thy salvation I will sing unto the Lord because he hath dealt bountifully with me yes God blessed David after King Saul died the glory is the king of Israel yeah, since the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came to the earth after the Lord Jesus Christ died for our sins and buried and rose again the third day, God is looking for them that are to be anointed with the Holy Ghost. In the days of the Old Testament, as the time of David, the Lord God was looking for them that are to be anointed to the king, uh, to, to be the king of Israel. But nowadays, in the days of the New Testament, our days, okay, he also looking for them that are to be the kings to reign with Jesus Christ in the millennial kingdom of Lord Jesus Christ. When he come, he come back to the earth as a king of the kings and lord of laws. As a time of the Old Testament, God is still searching into the, his heart, of, the heart of man, 
not the countenance at all. Even though the brothers of David never paid attention unto David when he was keeping his father's ship alone with all his life day and night, the Lord God was looking into his heart. Even though man never paid attention to him, including his father and his brothers, but only God was paying attention to see to seeing him searching his heart. What kind of man he is. The Lord God was looking into his heart, and he called him when the time was come to anoint him so that he might keep the ship of people of Israel. That is a ship of God. The God was looking for real you know, real good shepherd for the people of Israel, his chosen people. Apostle Paul testified of the Christians that are anointed by the Holy Ghost as Christ was anointed, as David was anointed. He just said, for whom he did foreknow, foreknow, before we were born he foreknow us. He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of a son, that's called Jesus Christ, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Because you're born again, the Holy Spirit, that's why Jesus Christ was the only begotten Son of God. Now he became firstborn of God. That means he became eldest brother, our brother, okay, because of us. Because we became, we became his brothers, you know, that's why he made, he, he became an eldest brother. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he also called, whom he called, then he also justified, to forgive us all our sins, because we believe in Jesus Christ, and whom he justified, then he also glorified. He glorified us. What that means? What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? If God was for David, who can kill him? No way. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for all, for us all, how shall he not with them also freely giving us all things? He is ready to give all things, you know, because he has given us only son, begotten son. That's why he was willing to give all, all things to us, to glorify us. What is that? That's why you have to understand what is the will of God? What is, you know, the love of God, mercy of God, abundant, you know, grace of God, okay? I bless all of you to understand the real grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Father God. Yeah, the children of God that are born again of the Holy Ghost, are not only justified, but also glorified. To be glorified is to be glorified with the Lord Jesus Christ that suffered and died and rose again in the day when he established his kingdom in the earth. Apostle Paul testified of this in more details. Very carefully. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. The Holy Spirit with the new testify you are children of God. Unless Holy Spirit testify of you as children of God, nobody understand who they are. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so, be that we suffer with them that we may be also glorified together. When you suffer in this world, okay? To, you know, witness his name. That we may be also glorified together as Jesus Christ glorified after he died for our sin and suffered, you know, in the world. For well, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with glory which shall be revealed in us. Even though all our life in the earth, right, we have tribulation, 
but you know, we will glorify with Jesus Christ for a thousand years when he come back to judge the world and to establish his kingdom in the earth for a thousand years. There's no cross, no crown. As David was attacked by Saul without ceasing, the children of God that anointed with the Spirit of God are persecuted until the day of departure from the earth. That's why many Christians persecuting, being persecuted in North Korea, in China, in Russia, in Syria, Egypt, right? All, you know, Muslim countries. Yes. Still many Christians being killed right now in this moment. Not only men, women, but children too. Some children say, you know, uh, to kill us, you know, oh, if I die, I, I see my father, I will tell about you. I never reject my Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, teenager, you know that? Examine yourself, what kind of faith in you. It is time to receive, you know, strong faith, all right? For the present world is now under the rule of Antichrist. The evil spirit was the spirit of the Antichrist. Therefore, when the children of God that are anointed by the Spirit of God to be the royal priest, hold fast at this hope, they are able to overcome all kinds of tribulation. In the confession of Apostle Paul, who had pursued after Christ and ran the race to run completely, we are able to understand what kind of life to be run for each of us. He testified of the life to be taken by us. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also knowing that tribulation work is patience, and patient experience, and experience hope. And hope makes us not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Yeah, when we have an abundant love of God poured onto our heart, even we can love our enemies. You know that? Just like a Stephen. He was torn to, he was torn to death, you know, by the Jews. But you know, just before he died, he just uh, lifted up his face to heaven and prayed to God, Lord, forgive their sins, forgive them, Lord. And he died. How he can do it? The love of God made him do that kind of miraculous, you know, prayer just before he died. He was Jesus. He's God. He's the love of God himself. He could endure all the cross, death and, you know, discouragement, all kind of things, all shames. Whenever the children of God are persecuted, living in the world under the rule of evil spirits, and David and prophets and the apostles and all saints prayed unto the Lord. The Lord God poured his spirit unto them, when we are abundant with the love of God, in the Spirit of God, we are able to rejoice even in the midst of infirmities and reproaches. Reproaches means insult. And necessity is poverty. And persecution and distresses for Christ's sake. The thing that is given unto us is the fullest of the Holy Ghost. The fullest of the Holy Ghost is manifested as the fullest of love of God. Let us listen to the testimony of Apostle Paul. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. He had you know, a very serious sickness on his eye. He couldn't see well, okay? And lest I should be exalted above measure, for this thing I besought the Lord thrice, three times, to heal him, right? That it might depart from me. 
And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, and my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glorify glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in approaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Whatever situation you are in, don't complain. Because God is saying, His grace is full unto you. When you are in weakness, when you are in trouble, it's a time the power of God come in you to strengthen you. All right? Not your strength, but strength of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the reason why we praise the Lord for His grace, for His salvation. Yes then all things make gather together to be good, okay? All things make for goodness, okay? This is the way we have, you know, rejoice in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, okay? Do it. You obey the words of God. You will receive the power of Christ. Then you can rejoice, regardless of what kind of miserable situation. It is the power of the Holy Spirit. You have experienced this kind of thing in the world. Then you can overcome any problem in your life in the future. All right? Yes, this world is not a good place to live. No peace. Always, you know, the devil attacking us. So... The best way to, you know, just get victory against devil is praise the, praise the Lord. The devil you know, try to bring to you as kind of something bad things so that you may not be able to rejoice, okay? But knowing that, right, the enemy, the praise the Lord, then God will deal with you bountiful love, okay? Bountiful grace. Yes, at, at the end. You will rejoice him for his goodness, okay, for his grace, you know, abundant one. All right? I bless all of you to just, you know, walk in the words of God, obeying his words of God, regardless of your emotion, regardless of your feeling, then you got a victory against the devil. All right? The Bible says the spirit of fear is not from God. Only three things are from the Lord. First one, love. Second one, strength. Third one, sound mind. Sound mind, okay? You have a sound mind, you have a sound body. Remember this. God bless you. Father, thank you for giving us a good message today. Your children want to be blessed through you giving them the full of the Holy Spirit, so that they may keep your words, observe your words, and obey your words, even though it's very hard to understand with the wisdom of God, our feeling. Lord, give them faith to obey your words, trusting in you, then to receive abundant grace from you to praise the Lord. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, Amen.